Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Cloud Wars Live. The digital revolution is in full swing, and we're attempting to figure out where the heck this is taking everybody. And such a big part of this is the whole world of talent. Uh, people who are in jobs, trying to find new ones, trying to realize you know, the, the sum total of their potential and where they want to head in a world where the, the desire for talent, the war for talent, the need for talent is just escalating dramatically. And also on the other end, we've got some young people just entering the job force today who are maybe at odds a little bit with the way the current system runs. We're going to have a great chat today with our expert on talent, Pat Fitzgerald. Patrick, welcome back. It's always great to see you. Thanks, Bob. Great to be with you again, as always. So, Pat, first, I got to say, I love what you've done with the place. <laughs> still, a, still a work in progress. Next All right, time, I'll, those, I'll be in a different space. <laughs> those are always the best ones. No, it's office. It's, it's good. It's, it's wonderful. But I think these days, too, you know, what, what we, we see in people's living rooms, their dens, their kitchens, yeah. this, is, this is a very, I think it's a nice touch the way we've able to see you know people's real lives not these antiseptic conference rooms Much everyone better. i and it's funny all the new video conferencing that i see they do these backdrops i don't know how to do that but you know <laughs> and, and it's it's not what they are you know so yeah it's very interesting <clears throat> so pat i want to to be sure to mention that you're the uh you know co-founder of career av uh, an excellent recruiting firm tell us a little bit about that and then we're really eager to hear some of your thoughts on uh, what you wanted to talk about today thanks bob so Career Ave, I'm a partner with Mark Hatfield. You had him on the uh, last time and uh, we're, we're doing very well. We offer executive search, contingent search, but we also, a big component of our business is contract recruiters, RPO. And you can find us at careerav.com. Well, Pat, uh, you get to run into all sorts of people from big companies, little companies, top of the organization, entry level, you know, throughout there. But I was fascinated to hear your idea about what you wanted to chat about today. And that's for some young people just leaving college, entering the workforce for the first time. <clears throat> so please, Pat, tell us about that. Because uh, again, like I said in the opening, this, the desire for business is to find smart people who can adapt and change, be part of an organization is overwhelming right now, but there's got to be a fit coming in on the other end, right? Exactly, exactly. And with so many jobs open today and so much need in the tech world and across all industries, um, I've had a lot of opportunities to coach over the years. Bob, you and I have talked a lot about it. You've done some yourself. Um, and coaching professionals at the executive level is an entirely different focus. Recently, as I mentioned earlier, I've had uh, phone calls from good friends, boomers like myself, who have called me and said, hey, Pat, would you be willing to talk to my, my son or my daughter or my granddaughter who's entering the workforce? So, <laughs> excuse me, like to talk about, honestly, the interview style today, because it's changed dramatically. COVID has had a huge impact on the way we interview, but it's also been evolving. So COVID escalated, I really think, the video conferencing interview style, but it, that had been coming forward. And, and in the future, I'd like to be able to talk about mid-career interviewing. It's a different style today than it's ever been. But my experience recently, Bob, with a lot of these early talents, recent grads, one or two years of experience, is that they're so frustrated because they have no idea how to actually change their personality. They're so adapted or, 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 or so capable in the social media environment they don't understand that that doesn't work in a video interview. And so I've had an opportunity to really be able to do some evaluations and, and help some of the young people that I've talked, that I'm speaking to now and coaching. I think it's getting bigger and bigger because I think there's a huge need for that. And I'm glad to do that. Glad to impart whatever wisdom we can certainly do for, for the young talent. So today it's, it's really gonna be focused on the early talent, recent grad, and, and how they have to recognize what they're so accustomed to in social media isn't what they, they have to change everything the way that they actually go into an interview cycle. So Pat, if, if I could go back a hundred years and be one of those, you know, uh, 20 some things, I'd say, well, why should I have to change? Why can't the company just accept me as I am? And, and that's a good question. And they do ultimately but you have what, what I think a lot of young people don't recognize is, is that the interview cycle is a personal presentation and they don't think that way. So they, their, their objective is to 
they have to change the way they see the, their approach. Most of them are so accomplished in social media that they immediately default to their bad behaviors. And that doesn't make it. Some of the components of the interview cycle that I talk a lot about is, is that these, these recent grads particularly, you know, again, there is a, a lot of grads that have been, that have gone to school for a specific career. That's somewhat different. That's a small percentage. Most of the grads today, the 80-20 rule certainly prevails, went to school and, and took a, a broad college, you know, a curriculum that isn't necessarily preparing them for what they think they want to be in, whether it be graphics design or marketing or sales or what have you. So they go into the interviews not recognizing that they have to do their homework. That's the very first thing. They're, they're, it's so, it's, it's, I find it very sad that these young people don't recognize that they have to present themselves. They have to ultimately gain a few advocates from the interviewers during the interview cycle. And in many cases, Bob, you know this, it's, it's more of a personality contest for the early grad or, or, or the early talent or the grad to actually gain a few people that are their advocates in the interview cycle that, you know, so that to differentiate themselves from the crowd of other interviewers you know, or interviewees that, that, are, that are certainly in the interview cycle for these positions. Pat, you know, uh, uh, I think there's, there's so much wisdom in what you're describing here, but I also want to contrast it right to, um, this, is not, this is not limited to new college graduates entering the workforce, right? I mean, a, a good friend of yours, somebody you work with closely, Rob Enslin, yep. and I just, uh, posted a podcast and an article about a conversation I had with him. And he says, you know, this is, this is just basic stuff. He said, when he said, I tell new people coming into the Google cloud sales organization, he said, stick with the simple things. He said, get up every day, show up on time, know your customer, take care of your customer better than the other person does. Right. So we, at any level of the organization, Rob says, that's what he does. Right. So, right you know, president of Google Cloud or entry level person coming in, it's fine to have, uh, you know, a, a, a healthy ego, but we, in looking for jobs, the, the idea is you have to put yourself almost in the other person's shoes, see the world through their eyes, yep. convince them that you're the right person to help them succeed, not that they have to convince you. Yep. So please come join us. So yeah. it, it, this, I, I think it's important because there's no attempt to try to say, you know, there's something wrong with these young people. It's oh, no. their, their point of view is, is yeah. out of whack. And I don't, it sounds like Patrick, the, the colleges haven't exactly uh, oriented them in the right way. And I wanted to mention that. And I, and I think this is going to be a bit controversial and it really troubles me because colleges are so expensive today. And they're so important. We all know that the value of an education. Now, when I interviewed young talent in the early days, it wasn't politically correct, but I can say it, which is I used to say to them, well, your college degree tells me that you can learn and you can learn maybe faster or better depending upon your GPA and what have you. Today, you can't say it that way, obviously, but it, it's still the same. I think a lot of companies see you know, college grads, especially ones that have a broad college degree versus a single focused on computer science or what have you, more that they can certainly learn. And again, we talk about the 80-20 rule. So I firmly believe that I, you know, most universities, and I think this is a large percentage of credited large universities around, including the Ivy Leagues, are not preparing their graduates for the interview. They're not preparing them for the business demand like Rob talks about. I agree, you know, they don't look at the tenacity. They don't look at doing their research, all the components. And all of those are the same, same exact components that I wanna talk about today in the interview cycle. But I really do believe that the universities have failed miserably, you know, in preparing them for the personality, especially with the young talent today who are so adept at, you know, adept at, uh, at social media, that they don't understand that they've got to change their characteristics. But I really call out the universities for a major failure, just in the personality components and the and watching for you know for the personal cues, preparing the you know the university graduates on how to interview. So if you're comfortable, let me kind of take you through my thoughts. Absolutely, Pat. I'd love to hear those. And um, 
prepare some of those for a second. I just want to take one moment here to offer a word from BMC, our sponsor. BMC wants to know, is your business on its A game? That's when systems are intelligent by learning from markets, where automation is paramount yet effortless, and when technology and people work as one in an enterprise. The A game is your business at its absolute best. BMC calls this the autonomous digital enterprise. Find out more at bmc.com slash A game. So Patrick, what is it that you try to impart to these young folks? And I'd love to hear too along the way, what are some of their reactions? They're, they're surprised, which is very interesting. And many of them recognize what I'm sharing with them is actual something that they had never thought of. And it's, it's wonderful to see that light bulb, as you know, Bob, go on. But they're not offended by the comments. And I'm fairly direct. So chatting with these young talents are, you know, is something you kind of have to be, you know, you have to really kind of just call it out, make sure that they fully understand. But what I, what I share with them, Bob, is, is that they have to be prepared. Many of them don't think that way. They have to go into the interview. First and foremost, what I suggest is they have to recognize that the interview is a segment in time. Don't get too far ahead of themselves and think about the job. Go into the interview with that one moment in time and make it the, make it the best you can, right? Mm -hmm. Make it so that you actually are presenting yourself because that's what it is. It's a marketing opportunity for you to present yourself. So I digress and I say to them, first of all, you got to do your homework. Well, what do you mean homework? You got to learn about the company. You got to go on LinkedIn and look at the interviewers that you're going to be meeting and see if there's any connections or synergies. Because ultimately, what you want to be able to do, want, first and foremost, is present a compelling self, yourself in a compelling view. You need to also recognize that your hope is that you're going to gain one or two advocates out of the interviewers that you make a personal connection with. Because they have so many people they're interviewing today, especially in the early talent, that they're, they're really not selecting people because of their skills, their, their abilities, more their personality and whether or not I could work with this person. Mm -hmm. So you have to present your, the best self that you can. And that bulb goes on fairly quickly. So I tell them the, the weekend before the interview, do your homework, go out and study the company, have a couple of really relevant questions prepared, two or three, you know, ha but make it very important, very relevant that, you know, hey, I just saw you ended your quarter and you had a great quarter. You know, can you share with me? Naturally, questions, always open ended questions. They don't think that way, but always open ended questions. But, you know, can you tell me what success looks like in this job? And if you can get to ask that question early, Bob, then you get to interview to the answers mm -hmm. and present yourself in the answers that they give you. What makes you successful in this company? Make it personal. See if you can bring that interviewer over to you on a personal side so you end up with at least one or two advocates, as I keep saying, out of the end of the interview. Th those things are, oddly enough, Bob, Greek. Mm -hmm. They, they, you can see the kids, their eyes are going up to the left or to the right, and they're thinking about, really, I don't think like that. But then the hard part is, is then I have to say to them, and I, and I say, now I want to do a video conference with you because I really want to see you in an interview. I want to do a mock interview or get a role play or what have you. And it's really funny, Bob, because these young, you know, young talents, and again, these are brilliant young people. I mean, I, I can't fault any of them. They just haven't been shown the characteristics and the, and, the, and the skills that they need to exhibit in an interview. And so when I get them on the video like you and I are doing right now, I find them looking at their phone or looking up a lot and they're missing all the personal cues. Yeah. When yeah. an interviewer asks you a question, you should be watching them. And so that if you give the answer, you should be able to you know, look at the expression on their face to know whether or not they've received the answer properly or they want more or they think you're a dunderhead. Right. These young people are looking at their phone or looking up because they're used to that because they're so used to the screen time. They're not realizing they've got to focus in on that person's face and recognize the personal cues. Yeah. And when you talk about personal cues to the young people, Bob, it's Greek. It's really a foreign thought to them. Hmm. Sorry, you were going to say. No, 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 Pat. I, I it just it it makes so much sense. You try to um, try to understand too. I, I better understand at my age that you know things change over time, 
right? So you're willing to, you know, allow some slack in here. Yep. But there's also a point at which <clears throat> until, I don't know, uh, until people of a certain age are totally out of the workforce, th these are, uh, you know, some of the rules. I, yeah. You can say it's fair, it isn't fair, but you want to, you're a job applicant, you want to get a position at this company. Well, you've got to play to what that company expects, what they yeah. demand, what they require. And I think those little things are, Pat, it's fascinating because as you've said, these are very intelligent, accomplished young people. Yep. Uh, and it's not maybe that, that they people have tried to tell them this for a number of years and they've just rejected it. They've never heard it before. Never. And the universities are failing miserably in having these fundamental conversations with each graduating class. The other piece that I, it, we all know, and I, and I think it's important to call out is <clears throat> certainly over the last five years, we've seen the interview change. In our day, it was obvious. We'd go in face to face. We could sit there and see the person. We could, you know, we were presenting our best. We were in our best suit, you know, and we were presenting ourselves. It was different. And honestly, that made it easier, as you know, Bob, sitting in the same room with that individual, because you could really have a good interaction conversation. And you were paying attention to that person because you really had to. In a video conference, which now certainly has become even more the norm through COVID, that is that that's an experience that again the early talent knows better than we do screen time but they don't recognize and they don't see because in the video conference i'm not seeing your whole body i'm not seeing body language and you know and 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 the different breaths that you might be taking so i'm not necessarily getting all the cues but more importantly they're not watching and i i say to them fundamentally are you the person that's waiting to answer or are you waiting you know to, you know, to actually hear what the person has to say. Right. And they look at me and they, you know, they say, I don't understand what you're saying. And I say, take a breath, let the person that's asking you the question, don't assume what the question is going to be and don't be preparing your answer while they're asking, let them finish their question, take a pause, take a three, four second breath and then formulate your opinion on how to answer. So you're focusing on their face and you're watching them when they actually finish their question. And then now you're watching them and their, their personal cues, their body language to make sure you're giving them the right answer at the end. And that's a foreign thinking you know, to the young talent today. What's, what's the reaction to as, as they hear some of these things, right? It seems like you know I've, nobody's ever told me this in 21 or 22 years. You know? Right, right. That's exactly right. They, they say that I, I don't think this way. And I say, no, I understand. And it, by the way, neither did we. So, you know, and I, I try really hard to take the sting out of it by yeah. not making yeah. us, our older generation, judgmental. And I said, we failed miserably too. Every generation does. But I think the schools taught better in the early days. They had the, you know, the guidance counselors and the coaches, you know, that were available to say to you, hey, you got to stop that tick or you got to stop that you know, you got to slow down in your interview and take a pause when you give a, you know, when you answer. But I said, I don't think they do that anymore. But on top of it, knowing that the video conference is the norm today for all interviews, many people are being hired today, Bob, having never met their boss face to face. They've met them video conference. But so today the norm is, and because it's a small screen, you're missing a lot of the personal cues. Yeah. And Pat, you know, so much of what I've heard uh, from companies that have hired a lot of these young folks coming in, they said, you know, the range of skills is really impressive, right? Because they're accustomed to data, oh, yeah. Yeah. right? No matter what field they're in, they, they like right. to work with that. They like to push and experiment and probe. So there's there's high qualifications, high capabilities. Pat, how, you know, I uh, I don't have a lot of hope or confidence that universities will sit up one day at colleges and say, oh, wait, hey, we're doing a bad job of that. Quick, you know, for three months from now, let's get this fixed. I, I don't think that's going to happen. Where will, without the benefit of some people yeah. like you offering this sort of counsel, where do they get it or, or what well, happens? That's the interesting thing. And you and I have seen over the last 10 years, the whole coaching, personal coaching really explode. We've always used it at the executive level. Bill McDermott, you know, who's one of the best executives you and I have ever worked with. I suspect Larry Ellison and Mark Benioff have all had personal coaches over their careers. But at the executive level, that's been kind of the tradition to get them to the whole next level. But at the early talent level, I worry that the only answer is, is that 
the, there's going to have to be a whole new industry on interviewer and interviewee coaching. And I think that's a dilemma that we really have because these young kids don't have any money. So hiring a coach to coach them, which is why, again, we'll go back and say it. I can't say it loud enough. The universities have failed miserably in this space because that's a component. If the kids are spending $100,000 on a four-year education and at the end they can't take a, you know, a one-day seminar and teach them personal skills, personal skills, it's sad that, you know, that, that, yeah. that they're leaving these, these young talents. And again, brilliant minds as we talk about you know, frankly, on their own. And that's a, that's a, that's a sad, uh, you know, result. Well, Pat, I don't mean to put you on the spot here, but people say that I don't mean to, but then we go ahead and do it. So I'll put you on. The, Pat, what about if you'd run into uh, one of these young people came in and you saw the different lights going off pretty quickly. And this person said, Hey, Pat, why don't we do this? You teach me how to do this. I'll build the online website that then will teach people how to do this we'll work this joint venture with career app i mean maybe that's one of those because i think we're you know <laughs> universities will say here's our 25 year plan yeah, yeah by, by 2050 <laughs> we'll have this this or i think there are some companies there out there be. but you're right i think that's a that's an opportunity and and as you know i'm not i'm not no longer interested in being you know, state of the art when it comes to all the technology. But you're right. I think if we could create a free online, you know, seminar, I, I, and you know, obviously there's plenty of platforms that would certainly play it. I think that would be a brilliant idea for sure. But again, I think you got to have, to your point, I think what you're asking is you got to have that 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 young mind that's creating the technology and using some of the old school skills to actually teach the personal skill sets. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody who can, a uh, young person who can straddle both worlds. Yep, right? yep. I understand. So, Patrick, fascinating. And you said that maybe next time you want to talk maybe up a step in the career path? One of the things that I'm experiencing is, is I'm talking to a lot of people I've known over the years. You and I have worked with a lot of brilliant minds and, and, and talking to those that are mid, mid-career. And they're stuck. They're plateaued. And in today's world with, you know, uh, DNI and what have you, there's a lot of, you know, talented people that are in the mid of their career that have no idea how to navigate to the next level. So I'm in the middle of those sort of coaching sessions also. And I think it, it, it's an entirely different, you know, uh, storyline yeah. with those, you know, with those talents to actually explain. But Oddly enough, Bob, same characteristics, getting to see them face to face, because in many cases, you know, they're self-assured because of their successes, but now they're plateaued and they don't know how to get to the next level. And we have a really interesting conversation about advocates also. So I, I so yes, I'd love to be able to talk about that mid, mid-career coaching sessions also. Uh, Pat, that's fantastic. I think it's enormously helpful and it, it extends, uh, you know, quite broadly because it reminded me, you know, one of your uh, fellow monthly digital all-stars here on the podcast, Christian Anschutz, he's a, a captain in the Marine Corps. And when he left active service, one of the things that he and his wife did, they started a, a nonprofit to help called Project Relo, which helps uh, veterans transitioning from the service into the private sector yep. because often they're enormously qualified but they approach the private sector job with the military system Rigor. names and qualifications and acronyms and yep. they, they're unable sort of to connect the language and the mindset you know fantastic people great character great experience but their world is so different from over here they need that sort of um, rethinking reimagination of how you reconnect into this different world absolutely and we did a lot of that over the years with military because as you know once you bring a military especially an officer into or or a staff sergeant that had command responsibilities into a commercial you know uh, company their rigor their their focus on orientation and and, and uh, process it, it ultimately became invaluable for the success of many of their business units. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, so if you're comfortable, what I'd like to do though for the early talent is give a quick summary if you know, as Please. we bring this in. 
my worry is, is that a lot of them go into it not knowing that there's a bunch of characteristics that they have to really understand. First and foremost, don't worry about trying to find the perfect job. Get a good job at a company that will give you some experience, and then you can navigate up to that perfect job. Maybe you won't go into the marketing department in the beginning, but that's okay. If you, you, know, if you recognize the company has that opportunity, go for the, the best job at the best company that's gonna give you the training and the experience, then you can start to navigate inside. So that's one component. Two, know that the interview is a moment in time. Don't worry about interview two or three or four. Make the, first, make the interview you're in the only most important piece and present yourself as the, excuse me, as the best self you can be. Mm -hmm. Most important to that piece is do your homework. Nobody thinks like this anymore, Bob. If they're data driven, which you and I know they are, they, you know, the young talent, do your homework, get out into the internet, identify the, the factors of the company, know what the company's doing and all about, what the positives and what maybe even the negatives have been. So you have some key questions that you can be prepared for. Two or three critical questions will help you to continue the conversation. And second on that, do you, doing your due diligence, go out, if you get the interviewer's names, go to LinkedIn and look at their profile. You may find that there's some real connections with some of those people. Maybe you both went to the same university to get, you know, at the different times, but, or, or, or maybe, you know, they live in the hometown that you grew up in or something like that. So your objective is, is to have, an, your objective is to do a great job for yourself in the interview, be interactive, expect that this is going to be a question and answer, but try to make it a conversational come, you know, time and, and pay attention to the person. Stop thinking like your normal screen time. Don't worry about, you know, um, don't worry about thinking about the answer until they finish. So pay attention to their face. The video conference is, is a challenge. It just doesn't give you all the personal cues and the body language that you really need to understand. So pay attention to their face and their body language as they ask the question and as you're answering to make sure that you give all the right answers. And most of all, have fun. Yeah. You're at your best when you're having fun. You know, if you're feeling stress, don't, you know, take a breath, have fun, enjoy yourself, try really hard to make it a conversation. Because in many cases today, it's not about your skills or your abilities. It's about a personality contest. It's about do these interviewers come out of the interview saying, I can work with Bob. I like this guy. So I'm going to be his advocate more so than the other five people that we interviewed. Mm -hmm. So recognize that in many cases, again, unless you're, you know, went to college to be a lawyer or a doctor, where you're really going into interviews specific, where you're really showing your skill sets. In most cases, that's not the case. So it's more about the personality contest. And I don't mean to, to make it, you know, unimportant. It's hugely important to recognize that you really want to connect with these people that are on the interview cycle. Had great wisdom there. Uh, that that is wonderful. I'm I'm so happy that this was uh, an idea that you came up with today because it's so vital, right? It because it, it right it can tend to be one of things like what the hell is wrong with these kids? You know they they're cocky. They're stuck. Well, you're saying it isn't that they don't know. We were the same. Yeah, it's it's something quite different. It's a different world for them. So one, they've got to try to figure out the right orientation. And I imagine Pat also the advice that you're offering here to the young people is going to be taken up by a lot of the companies hiring people on this side who maybe will say, okay, maybe I, I ought to give these kids a little bit of slack. They're not being disrespectful. They're, they're acting the way they've sort of been trained to act. And exactly. Uh, exactly. I'll have to maybe put something into the development program here that helps right. reinforce all those <clears throat> great points that you've just made, right. Pat. In the end, you have to think about differentiating yourself, you, the interviewee, differentiating yourself amongst the crowd of other people that are interviewing for these jobs. It's funny. It's sad. I don't mean it to sound funny, but there's so many great openings out there. Look online. Every company has, a, you know, hundreds of openings. And there's so many people interviewing that are telling me I've had 15, 20, 30, 40 interviews, and I still can't get a job offer. And I say, okay, well, now let's look at you, not look at the roles that you're looking at. And that's when they really start to go recognize the light bulbs going on at that point. Yeah. hopefully it'll help pat that's great it's really wonderful and i i'm uh this was fascinating in itself and very helpful and i look forward to our next conversation where you can talk about what goes on at the mid-market 
and some uh, mid-career and some of the uh, ideas and adaptations people have to make at that point as well. Absolutely. Bob, thank you again for inviting me onto these podcasts. I really do appreciate it. Hopefully, people will find this information to be helpful. Well, Pat, please, uh, I should be the one doing the thank and it's great. Thank you so much for uh, the time here. Always good to talk with you. And folks, thanks to all of you for being with us here at Cloud Wars Live. We had Pat Fitzgerald from Career Ave, and we'll be back in about a month with some more stories from Pat about what goes on at the mid-career point too. See you next time.